It is believed the goddess Kali protects this place. At dawn, a ritual offering invokes her name. Deliver me across this ocean of suffering, O Kali. Destroy my sorrows. It is the shipbreaker's prayer. This is a Lang on India's Bay of Cambay. A place where ships come to die and men die with them. They come from all over India, from impoverished towns and villages where there is no work, little hope. My name is Narayan Chand, but everyone calls me Meetu. I come from a poor village. My parents live in sheer poverty and hunger. When I decided to come, I told my friend, don't tell my parents until I'm on the train. When my parents found out, they cried, you should have studied, learned something. What is there in Alam? I told them, I'll send whatever money is left after I have paid for my own basic necessities. Nothing could have prepared me to for what he was about to see. Hundreds of the world's largest ships beached like great whales on the shore. This is the biggest ship graveyard in the world. On 10 kilometers of oily sand, 40,000 men tear apart half the world's discarded ships with their bare hands. It is one of the biggest recycling operations anywhere. It is also an environmental disaster. For the men who break the ships, the paradox is clear. The job that might kill them is their only hope of survival. When I came here, I saw a huge piece of iron sink into the sea. I wonder how a big ship floats. Alan Control, Alan Control, Velma, Velma, come in please. Velma, Alan Control. High tide on the Arabian Sea. Alan Control, Velma, I cannot hear you. Channel one, three, over. Optimum conditions for the first step of shipbreaking. A beaching. Two, five, zero. Roger, course to 250. Okay. 7.7 knots, sir. And still increasing, right? Yes, still increasing. Coming up now. <laughs> okay. So right now, 8 knots. Now. For a sailor, the most unnatural thing in the world is to beach a ship. 9,000 tons of steel, plowing at full speed straight for sure. How much can we go up ahead now? Oh, we got about two miles still to go. Now we're just doing about 11. Two, nine, zero. 
290. It's a tense operation, guided only by the human eye and simple compass directions. Uh, how much now? Speed, please. 10.9 knots. Okay, make a 295. Roger, 295. This is the journey every captain dreads. It is my ship, but now it's going to the graveyard, you know. The Brazilian chemical tanker Velma approaches her final destination after 30 years at sea. We are just getting the engine RPM to maneuvering speed, and the uh, captain has already given us a standby. Over the years, the Velma has been home for hundreds of sailors, and it's an emotional farewell. The night before, her engine ceased, as though she knew the end was near. You develop a kind of human attachment almost, you know. Sometimes when my machines don't work, I literally talk to them and I tell them, just one last time. Now I know I'm taking her on her last journey, you know. I'm taking her in. And I look at it from the point of view, like, person who is giving off his uh, organs, you know, I mean, after a death or something, after, you know, when he's, he's given the permission and then a part of him lives, you know, in someone else, you know. So we believe uh, it's an Indian philosophy of rebirth, you know, karma. Roger, 312, sir. 312. Harder port. Yes, yes, sir. Harder port now. With its keel scraping bottom, the tanker drives hard towards a narrow lot, a few feet from the workers on shore. Captain Magikar has made a perfect beaching. Bada sahab, we are beached, fantastic. We are mostly right on the beach nearly. Okay, but we keep the engines ahead, but I have still got to let go the anchors. Okay. Now this once proud vessel has become scrap. Today, Alang is well known, even infamous. But two decades ago, it was a pristine shore that few people had heard of. First time I'd have come to Alang, we came to the lighthouse. And we must have walked five kilometers along this whole beach, just to meet one fisherman. Asif Khan was one of the founders of Alang. We are the first ship here in about uh, June of uh, 1983. And uh, uh, well, she came here just at the lighthouse because there was only the lighthouse. There was an open beach with the lighthouse. So she came opposite Alang Light. And that's where literally then we had to put the plots in, that we had to start with plot number one right in front of the lighthouse. There are 183 plots today. 30 years ago, shipbreaking was done from dry docks in Canada, the United States, and Europe before labor costs and environmental regulations shut it down. In the 1980s, Indian entrepreneurs seized the opportunity. They didn't need expensive docks, just a beach that they could drag the ships onto. A lang was perfect. The high tides would carry even super tankers on shore and wedge them in the sand. मैं ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि अलंग से ब्रेकिंग यार विश्व में सबसे ज़्यादा एलडीटी के मुताबिक सबसे ज़्यादा कटिंग करने वाला ये सिर्फ ब्रेकिंग यार और गुजरात में जो वो भी भावनगर जिले में जितना मुला मुनाफा इनको मिलता है यहाँ जो प्रॉब्लम है अलंग से ब्रेकिंग यार में वो एनवायरनमेंट की है और दूस Some call it India's gold rush, and migrant workers just keep coming, lured by a few dollars a day. 
People like Meeti would uh, come here basically for the community moving here, and this is a good, uh, good earning wage compared to where he's from, uh, where the where, where there is absolutely no work in a way. So this is a work that's accepted there, and uh, they they look forward to come here because it's it, it's a prestigious job to be in Alam. The first day I came to the shipyard, I asked for work. A man told me to separate the iron pieces and the non-iron pieces with the help of a magnet. I'm just thinking. The ship will feed so many people. At least 500 people will earn a living while the ship is broken down. It can take six months for a ship to literally disappear, hauled away by hand, bit by bit. Steel cables pull the vessel higher on shore. If a cable snaps, it can cut a man in half. On this beach, the temperature rises to almost 50 degrees Celsius. There are fires of a thousand torches and fumes from burning steel. Shipbreaking is a billion dollar a year industry, and everyone wants a cut. Western companies don't pay to dispose of their ships cleanly. Instead, they sell them for scrap. The Indian buyers make a profit by reselling the steel with very few costs. No benefits for their workers, no social safety net. Ganpati Bappa, Moria. This is Lord Ganesh. This is our deity. I place it on my ship and then I pray to the idol that you please guide me my ship and take it to a safe destination. Right now that I have brought her to the safe destination, this is my last prayer to this deity and that's the end of my journey. The Velma waits to be broken. Her electricity has been cut. Her lifeline is gone. After a voyage of 30 years, she seems frozen in time. As though her crew just vanished. Leaving everything behind. You feel bad, but there's a stage in everybody's life where you have to, it's called the end. So it's the end for her. What's yeah. that? Cycle, dust to dust. Yeah. Steel to steel, dust to dust. It's not in your blood to beach a vessel, you know. But then you realize ultimately that what's necessary has to be done. You see? This vessel has served its useful purpose and it will, the steel will get cut and perhaps go into the making of another vessel, which will again start the whole cycle, virtually the cycle of life all over again. This tanker is the size of an apartment block. 
10 stories high. Challenging the men who will break it down. I was like, I'm going to go to the house. 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 But I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Patil and his crew are gas cutters, the elite of shipbreaking. They are the first men to torch up inside the ship after the fuel lines are supposed to be cleared. My senior cutters do have a very good knowledge of the ship itself. He's uh, numero uno in a way of the whole organization. That uh, he knows exactly how a ship is built. He's not had any course in naval architecture, nor has he had any engineering course. But uh, this is a tradition he has learned from observation. Asif Khan was one of the only shipyard owners who would talk to us, one of the few regarded as a good boss. We're doing the worst possible thing you can do to a ship. We're not painting it, we're not repairing it. We're actually breaking it. It's a 40-foot drop, and there is danger everywhere. No plans to indicate which section to cut or how they will fall. Deadly vapors can be trapped behind the steel. Gas cutters literally follow their noses knowing each cut could set off an explosion. In India, this is the age of Kali Yuga, the age of iron, the age of darkness. Each day in Alang, there are rituals and prayers for the shipbreakers at the Hindu shrine of Kali Ma. She is their spiritual protector, goddess of both birth and destruction. She is an awesome force. हाँ वो भी माँ है वो जगत जननी है वो जगत की पालन करती है Like a lang itself, Kali Ma is a paradox. The man-eating destroyer, who is also the giver of life. I have six brothers. I'm the youngest. One of my brothers died here. We are forced to do this work. We are poor people. What choices do we have? A 
as certain as the tides that bring these ships to Alang. It is the cycle of death and rebirth that forms the rhythm here. जो एकॉमोडेशन है, तो एकॉमोडेशन में लकड़ा भी होता है, कपड़ा भी होता है, ग्रेलू जूस के बर्तन भी होते हैं, और भी सामान है, लैंडरी का सामान है, वो सभी को निकाल के The men work on top and the women are down. By rope they lower them and they bring them to the plot, load them in the tractors, and whichever dealer has bought it. It goes to his plot. The women's job is only to carry this from the ship. So instead of working about 10 hours in the field, in the heat, and this is an easier job. So the women take this. Pay is not so good. It's uh, 40 rupees per woman, 50 rupees per gent. Once known as the Gypsum King, this Canadian-built ship offers up Western riches for a new market. still manufacturing plant in this part of India. So this is God-given gift to this region of our country, and we can produce millions of tons of steel. More than 300 ships are being scrapped every year. So that would be more than 50% of the total ships being scrapped all over the world. This shipyard generates nearly three million tons of recycled steel each year. And with it, thousands more jobs are created in downstream industries. first came here, I think adjoining villages, they would have owned maybe 10 trucks within 10 kilometers of here. Today we have a thousand trucks and they all get employment. That's a very good source of income for them. This is plot number 111. I deal with these boats. These are known as luxury liners. And they have all the facilities in there, with microphones and steering wheels. And we get them from the uh, ship braking yard. These are the engines. But we depend on the ships. The more the ships come in, the more profit we have over here. Items are being resold for use. 
numerous, there are n numbers of items. Main Street, Alang. They say you can find anything here and every kind of person. Like any boom town, it's become a magnet for the hopeful and a refuge for the dispossessed. Abandoned children, orphans. Sangam's father was a shipbreaker who started drinking and disappeared. Then his mother died. Sangam's dream is to be with his little brother, who works and sleeps in a shanty down the road. Misri, how much do you need? Say it again. Say it again. Okay. Say it again. 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 The people in my village think that they have seen the whole world. But if they leave the village, they will realize that the world is so big. From Alang to the nearest city, Bhavnagar, is a journey of 50 kilometers. Along the way, there are signs of prosperity, even in this place parched from drought. Far from the shipyards, the money generated by Alang is a lifeline that feeds a million mouths. There are many downstream industries, especially steel re-rolling mill, oxygen plants, steel plants, scrap yards. It has brought wealth to this area. Not only Alang people, but the people all of the full area. They have uplifted themselves due to Alang. Industrial revolution has come to the state of Gujarat, courtesy of Alang. For centuries, this area existed on agriculture. Now, farm boys feed a different beast. You need to study the full process that actually what is happening over here. We can see other countries of the world which are creating more problems than what we are doing here. And we are not doing anything which is harming to any extent to the environment or to any other countries. The harm is more insidious. A blasting furnace melts chunks of metal at 1300 degrees Celsius. The air is acrid. The fumes fill the lungs.
For every worker killed in shipyard accidents, many more will die of this, breathing the carbon fumes in these steel mills. If uh, a lung is affected to any extent in any manner, then the, there will be a collapse in the downstream industry. They cannot survive. The survival of these men is in peril too. It is estimated one in four will get cancer. Death, you make the journey with us. You dwell on the fierce cremation ground. Your fire consumes us. The state of Gujarat is the birthplace of Mahatma Gandhi. Yet today, it is less a symbol of peace than a rallying cry for reform. The shipyards are a toxic wasteland. Reports of their horrors draw international attention that threatens to shut down the industry. The ships being scrapped today were built in the 1970s, before asbestos and PCBs were banned. Heavy metals were used in their paints. Some carried radioactive material. These substances are released with every cut. The sand, the dust, the air are full of it. Countries like Canada have banned the export of toxins under an international treaty called the Basel Accord. But the murky sail of old ships slipped under the radar until 1998, when two journalists won a Pulitzer Prize for exposing it. Then Greenpeace scientists released a shocking report. We found extremely high levels of all kinds of toxics. If we would find these toxics in the West, it would require cleanup of the sediment. An average ship can easily have 20 tons of asbestos on board the ship. 600 ships a year, that would make 12 million kilo of asbestos being put on the beaches. You don't need one kilo to get a damaging effect on your health. That's the thing with toxic waste, with hazardous waste. In very minimum amounts, they can have devastating effects to the health of people. Ship recycling is uh, eco-friendly. Only question is arising. What did happen? In old time, asbestos was never considered as hazardous. Permitted to use. PCB was permitted to use. Heavy metal was permitted to use. Nobody say you don't use it. But due to change of the environmental system and the thinking of the people, the things which were never considered hazardous in past is considered today hazardous. Now the question is, it is existing in the ship. So somebody has to handle it. Whether we handle it or somebody else handle it. So there is no choice of it. Only way is a question is how to better handle it. 
Nagar State's association is faced with a dilemma. If India enforces environmental laws, third world competitors who don't will take the business away. And how can the West enforce such double standards when shipbreaking was deemed too hazardous and expensive to do there in the first place? तो एक बाद में रहता है मगर लंबे अरसे तक जो ये काम करते रहे हम तो वहाँ जहरीले गैस है ये सब होने से हवामान का प्रदूषित वातावरण के लिए वातावरण के अनुसार हमारे बदन में फेफड़े सड़ जाएंगे ये सब तो है ही और आँखों में भी नुकसान होते हैं न्यूमोकोनियोसिस इज अ लंग डिजीज which happens in most industrial sector areas where there are lots of fumes gases which is being inhaled constantly it is like smoking 10 to 15 packs of cigarette a day all the time the shipyard owners pay this doctor his advice to the workers work up wind while doing the gas cutting he should remain in the opposite direction to the wind Wind should just go away because there is lot of breeze on the sea side. It will definitely harm less to him. Alang has become a metaphor in the struggle between the third world and the first, between the poor and the rich. In boardrooms far away, solutions are pondered. Can shipbreaking become clean? Who will pay? In this battle, time is an enemy. If shipbreaking became eco-friendly today, it would take decades for this environment to recover. Shipyard siren marks the end of another grueling day. Mitu's uncle has worked in Alang for 20 years. His sight is almost gone. His feet are badly burned. Me too helps take care of him in the hut they've built of ship parts in the workers shanty town across the road from the beach. There's no running water here. No latrine. Just shacks built on a site that oozes contaminants from the beach. Cholera, polio, leprosy. Old diseases meet modern ones, like AIDS. My uncle has become ill. He has a high fever. A lot of people here are sick. My brother died of a fever. My parents are very worried about me.
Another orphan has found refuge on Main Street. This is Sangam's little brother, the boy whose mother was bitten by a snake. Santosh dreams of becoming a gas cutter someday. To Western eyes, this is a slum. But people come because there is work, money, and a chance for a better life. I come from the soil of my village. I miss my family, my mother the most. I do not want to marry. That would be too much tension. I would have to earn more to feed another person. I do not earn enough. All that is a matter of to fate. It's all in God's hands. Some put their faith in God. Some find solace in other places, like the local bootleggers. After working every day, I must have money. For my tiredness and my fitness, to get rid of both of them. <laughs> to get rid of them, I come here every day. कोई श्रमिक सुबह काम करने के लिए चलता है तो उसको 100% वो नहीं कह सकता तो शाम को इसी खोली में फिर से एवरीडे वन सिफ्ट एवरीडे वन डे इसीलिए यहां कितनी डेज होती है वो हम रियल फैक्ट में नहीं बता सकते लेकिन कहा जाता है कि हर साल में कम से कम 300 लेबरर्स की डेथ अलग सिफ्ट यार्ड सिफ्ट की यार्ड में at the shipyards of Alang, nothing ever stays the same. It's a movable worksite.
the entrance and exit are different every day. Inside, in the darkness, it is impossible to know what iron chunk may fall or what staging area is safe. As far as the world over is concerned, it's one of the most dangerous places as far as workplace or other stuff is concerned. We want to eradicate that image totally. Most important is the death rate should become zero. Then we could feel, OK, we achieved something. There's no hospital in Alang. The closest one is an hour away. No one really keeps records, but it's estimated that eight in 10 men have been injured working here. Their bones crushed by steel plates or fractured from falls. Some are blinded by torch sparks. Others are burned. मेरा खुद के साथ भी हुआ है नया नया बत्ती लिया था जहाज के ऊपर तो मतलब नहीं ध्यान मेरा तो हवलदार काट दिया उसी झड़प पे बैठ के जैसा शेख चिल्ली ने किया था ऐसे ही तो झड़प के साथ मैं बॉटम तक गया था तो थोड़ा पैर में चोट लगा था दो तीन दिन तकलीफ हुआ था और उसके बाद ठीक तब से कोई मेरे साथ तो नहीं हुआ The Red Cross Clinic in Alang takes the simplest cases. Doctors travel here one day a week. The clinic was initially started here in the Alang. It was having only a facility to see patients in the outdoor department. There was no indoor facility. Since four years, it has started indoor facility. And since then, we are coming here every week. All the laborers are very far away from their family. So they are very depressed, they are very stressed. While in Alang, most of the time, the people are scarcity of love, scarcity of caring, and scarcity of money. So these three factors, they are crucial in treating patients at this particular space. There is no union in Alang. Some workers have tried to organize one, but most are too afraid. <laughs> It's always about money. The shipyard owners say they are hurting. The shifting price of steel and currency exchange can cut profits fast. Competition from other poor countries has raised the price of these ships, and the interest on the loans they take to buy them can be crippling. So the untrained workers are pushed to work harder, faster. I 
सेफ्टी के लिए कुछ ध्यान रख के काम करने का सामने वाला अगर गलत कर रहा है तो उसको बताने का भाई ये काम गलत हो रहा है इसको इस तरह करो अगर अपने नज़र में आया तो ऐसा कोई एक आदमी अगर चिल्लाता है तो बोलता है वो बहुत टाइम से चिल्ला रहा है चिल्लाने दो तब तक तो मैं निकल जाऊंगा ऐसा बहुत बार होता है कंटेक्ट वाले अपने कमाने के चक्कर में यही हो गया और सुरक्षा का क्या है बस हेलमेट मिल गया बत्ती वालों को चश्मा मिल गया उसके बाद मुकादम घाही बाजी में आदमी लोग को लगा देते हैं काटो काटो जल्दी जल्दी में इसलिए दुर्घटना हो जाती है और बाकी क्या है वो जैसे डाकू पे जाइए तो वहाँ तब लाइन लगाइए तब तो आपका पैसा लगेगा तीन साढ़ा मार के और मुकादम थे छोटे लाल वो बोला कि आली आली खींचो तो बोली बोला गया उसी पर पराई लगाया गया उसका पराई खाली पड़ गया और नीचे चला आया है मुकादम के उगताने से वो वार चढ़ाते समय उसके पराई झूठा पड़ गया नीचे बाटम में चला आया है और फिर उसको निकाला गया कचड़े में से और फिर मारुति में लेकर भागा गया तो बोलते हैं कि नहीं ऐसे ऐसे तुम कहने का सबसे डेंजर ऐसा तो पूरा जहाज ही डेंजर है जहाज का काम ही डेंजर है वैसा देखा जाए तो वैसे सबसे ज़्यादा डेंजर तो फिर तेल का टाके हुआ पाइपलाइन हुआ यही काम में ज़्यादा डेंजर है सी ओ टू बाटला गिटला सब खोलने खालने का काम होता है वो भी डेंजर ही है Work has just begun on a tanker called Invil when a gas cutter's spark hits an uncleared gas line. तो वहाँ से दो आदमी आ गए मेरे को बुलाने कि वो बोला कि तुम्हारा गांव वाला एक पास नंबर में काम करता था वो वहाँ कुछ अंगार लगा था तो जल गया तो फिर मैं वहाँ पे गया तो वहाँ पे बहुत भीड़ था अंदर तो किसी को जाने नहीं दिया वो लोग तो बोला कि आदमी को दवा खाने में ले गए तो मैं दवा खाने में जा देखा तो वहाँ पर उसका लाश एकदम विकृत हालत में हुआ था पहचानने लायक नहीं था मैंने उसका दाँत पर से पहचान में आया था ये अपना आदमी है पाँच नंबर में छः आदमी मर गए थे और कुछ पाँच लोगों को ज़्यादा जख्मी हुए थे उसको भावनगर हॉस्पिटल में दाखिल भर्ती किया था तो उसका बाद में पता नहीं है कि इसका क्या हुआ है जैसा आपने हिसाब से जो हुआ वो कर दिया मतलब लेबर से पैसा कर जमा करके उनके बाल बच्चे को दे दिया इतना कर जितना आपने से हुआ उतना किया
six men were killed in the tanker Inville. But officials barred access to the shipyard. There was no sign of the wounded at the hospital in Bavnagar. It was as though nothing had happened. Just rumors. I have seen it all being done. I have seen people getting drowned. And their, their body goes in the sea. Who bothered? Nobody. There were certain people who were brought out in pieces. So then they make out by their shirts. Then we know. I will not give up my life for my employer. I feel guilty working, not studying. I don't know what happened to me. I got caught here. parents have already lost one son to Alan. When I telephoned them, they asked me about my health. They asked me to return, but I refused. Days after the Inbil explosion, an American-Norwegian consortium pledged to deliver clean ships to prevent future accidents. Ready on three zero five. Very good. There is no stopping the international scrutiny that now comes with toxic ships. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. And this one's a real prize. The name is Tulip. Uh, the LDT is around 8,000 tons. The Tulip is really a Norwegian ship called the Gurd. Greenpeace put her on their most toxic list before she disappeared. She was sold to Libya, then resold several times. She flies a bogus flag. The ocean is full of ships like her, phantom ships, whose first world owners claim no responsibility. 10.3, thank you. You can't allow the ship owners to run away. They have to brought to the regulation, and that should be the system. So what we are now asking in the world scenario, okay, when you are talking for the regulation for the world ship recycling, you have to make a regulation for the ship owners also. You cannot be one-sided, one game. 307. 307. In the coming years, the number of ships to be broken will double. 307. Very good, Captain. Thank you. 
Yet export of toxic waste is against international law. We see that the world deals with double standards. Western countries are happy to send say, the toxic waste to poor countries, but at the same time don't want to accept, don't want these toxic waste in their own countries because they are, well, they want to protect their people and the environment, which is good. But they should not, and I think we cannot allow this double standard to, to exist for longer. Disposing of the world's toxic ships should be considered a service to the world. It should not be the shipbreakers who pay the price. Let go, anchor. Let go, anchor quickly, Captain. Captain, thank you once again. Excellent job. And I wish you a very good vacation. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your kind co cooperation. जो बनाया होगा वो बिचार कितना मेहनत से बनाया होगा जब इसका भी कुछ पानी में चलने का तारीख है बोलते हैं कि इतने ही वर्ष साल मतलब ये पानी में चल सकता है पर जब उसको काटने भी लगते हैं तो पहले ही बोलते हैं कि कसाई घाट में आ गया बिचार इतना अच्छा जाल चला जा रहा है समय कल योग एक हम कैसे है इसी तरह तो वो जा रहा है उसके साथ सब ऐसा ही जाता रहेगा उसके बाद आ सकता है कुछ अच्छे से दिन यहाँ का काम ही ऐसा है घड़ी में क्या हो जो डरता हो यार रुक ही नहीं पाता यार लोग। वैसे आदमी का मूड जहाँ होगा वहाँ तो होना ही है। Valley, your sword annihilates demons. It makes the ocean roar. Your darkness is the beauty. Our birth and death are yours. कपन बांध के यहाँ पे काम करना है यहाँ का काम करना है कि औरत को बोलना अगर अपना औरत है कि मैं अभी सुपर ड्यूटी पे जा रहा हूँ 
तब तक तुम माथे की बिंदी बोल दे अपने यहाँ माथे की बिंदी लगाना नहीं मैं शाम को घर पे आऊंगा तो लगा लेना forever i would love to travel and see the world i would love to sail away for now the sight of the ships fills my heart with happiness it's dharma the ship dies so we can survive Okay, I'm let go the anchor. 